Hey guys, Andrew Suter, pastor of Bible Baptist Church. Wanted to come to you with a quick little Bible study on the mystery of iniquity. Now, the mystery of iniquity is found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 7. And we find that the mystery of iniquity was around even in the time of Paul. Now, I'm going to give you a thought here. I'm not saying that this is absolutely true, but let me give you a thought that... Uh, uh, that may be an interesting study, and maybe some of you can study this out further and uh, get some more light on it. But what is the mystery of iniquity? The Bible doesn't very clearly lay out what the mystery of iniquity is that was already working in the days of Paul. But let me just kind of use some scripture with scripture, you know, cross-referencing. We find in 1 Timothy chapter number 3 and verse number 16 that the mystery of godliness is the fact that God was manifest in the flesh, you know, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached on, you know, believed on in the world, you know, da 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 da. I'm forgetting the whole list there in 1 Timothy 3:16. But basically it just talks about the ministry, his incarnation and ministry, okay? Now, if the mystery of iniquity is the fact that God became a man, then maybe the mystery of excuse me, if the mystery of godliness is uh, God becoming a man, then maybe the mystery of iniquity is Satan becoming a man, Satan being manifest in the flesh. You say, well, that's weird. You know, what do you mean Satan being manifest in the flesh? Well, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, verse number 15, this is the very first promise of the Messiah. It says God is speaking to the serpent, and he says, I will put enmity between thy seed and the woman's seed. Now, what's very clearly taught there is that Satan has a seed, okay? The question now arises, is this talking about a physical seed or a spiritual seed? Now, I'm going to be honest. I believe it's talking about both, okay? I think that there is a physical and a spiritual seed of Satan because the Bible clearly teaches there in Genesis 3.15 that Satan does have a seed. Let me you know, clarify on the spiritual side. I believe that every lost person is a son or a child of Satan. Jesus told those Pharisees in John 8, 44, he said, you're of your father, the devil. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 12 that Cain was born of that wicked one. I do not believe that that is talking about a physical literal. I don't think the devil was over in the Middle East, you know, having sex with a bunch of Jewish ladies producing all these Pharisees, okay? I don't think that was happening. I think that's talking about something that was, uh, excuse me, uh, spiritual, okay? So I think the devil, I think every lost person is a spiritual child of the devil. And then when you get saved, when you get born again, you become a child of God, okay? that I'm not physically a child of God yet, okay? That'll happen at the rapture, the resurrection. I'm spiritually a child of God, though. So I believe Satan does have a physical and a spiritual seed. I think that lost people are spiritually the seed of Satan. Now, though, on the flip side, I do believe that Satan does have a physical seed. I do think that Genesis 3.15 is talking about a physical seed because we, of course, know that the seed of the woman, you know, because it says there that I'll put in between, between thy seed and her seed, and thou shalt bruise his, or he shall bruise your head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So, we obviously know that the seed of the woman is Jesus Christ, and he is physically the seed of the woman, right? I mean, he is the literal, physical fulfillment of that prophecy in Genesis 3.15. So, I believe that the literal, I believe that the, the seed of the serpent is also a literal, physical fulfillment of that verse, and I believe that it is none other than the Antichrist, okay? I believe that the seed of the serpent is the Antichrist, the physical, literal seed. Now, we find that Judas Iscariot is called the son of perdition in John chapter number 13. He's also called that in John chapter 17. We also find that the Antichrist in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 3 and 4, he's also called the son of perdition. It's only two times the son of perdition is mentioned, one time in reference to Judas, one time in reference to the Antichrist. Now, if you go back and study the prophecies, especially like in Zechariah chapters number 11 and, and all that, you really find out how specific the Bible gets about the Antichrist. Well, it's interesting 
that verses that clearly deal with the Antichrist, like Zechariah eleven seventeen, talking about the idol shepherd, I D O L, uh, talking about you know physically worshiping idols. It's found in the same passage, the same the same context of scriptures where we find the prophecy of Judas selling the Lord out for 30 pieces of silver. And you'll find that oftentimes when you find a prophecy about Judas, you'll also find a prophecy about the Antichrist. The reason for that is, is I believe they are the same person. I believe that Judas was the son of perdition, the Antichrist. He said, but wait a second, preacher. Uh, doesn't the Bible say that Judas was the son of Simon? Yes. Okay, so let me explain this. The Bible clearly calls Judas, or Jesus in the Bible, in John chapter 6, clearly calls Jesus. I believe I believe it's verse 70, if I remember correctly. I can't remember exactly. I think it's verse 70. It might be like verse 69. Somewhere around in there, Jesus says that Judas, have not I chosen 12 of you, and one of you is a devil. Jesus calls Judas a devil. Now, a lot of guys will misinterpret that and say that Judas was a devil from the beginning. Never says that. So, the Bible does, though, call... So, he's a, he's a devil, okay? Very clear. He is a devil. But it also says he's the son of Simon. And for years, that really, really bothered me. I always... Man, if Judas is the son of Satan, but he's, he's called the son of Simon here... Well, then it, I was just reading, and it, and it struck me. I believe it's over there in Luke chapter number 3. The Bible calls Jesus the son of Joseph. Now, we know that Joseph was his earthly adopted father. It was not his real, actual father. Jesus' actual father was, was you know, God the Father, okay? The Holy Ghost comes and impregnates Mary, you know, overshadows her. She's found with a child of the Holy Ghost. Joseph is called his father, though, but it's not his quote-unquote, real daddy, okay? I believe it's the same way with Judas Iscariot. Simon would have been his earthly adopted father, but I believe that Judas Iscariot, his father was the devil. I mean, I'm talking about the, the literal, physical relationship there. It, that was his father. I believe he's the son. He, he The Bible calls him the son of perdition. And I believe that the Antichrist, now there's a lot of speculation, because I do believe that Judas is going to be the Antichrist. Um, now the speculation is, is, does he like come back from the dead, you know, or is it like a, you know, quote-unquote reincarnation thing? Um, is it like, a, and when I say reincarnation, I don't mean like, you know, like the Buddhists teach it or anything like that. But like Elijah, uh, the spirit and power of Elijah was on John the Baptist, and Jesus said this, you know, John the Baptist, you know, is Elijah. If you'll receive it and accept it, John the Baptist is Elijah. Could it be something like that? I don't really know. But I will say this. I do think it's interesting that Paul says that the mystery of iniquity was already working all the way back in his day. Now, here's, here's where it gets a little weird. You ready? I'm not exactly sure how the Antichrist manifests himself again. If it's a person that's already born, if it's just, you know, I personally believe it's probably like Judas just coming out of the pit. I don't really know. But here's the speculation. If the mystery of iniquity was already working then, then that means that the devil has had the Antichrist on deck ever since the days of Paul. Because it was already working in Paul's day, and it's already working now. It's going to be you know, fulfilled in the tribulation period. So that means the Antichrist has been on deck for the past almost 2,000 years. You say, Preacher, what, what does that mean for you and I? Well, here's what it means. The mystery of iniquity, if the mystery of godliness is God being manifest in the flesh, the mystery of iniquity, Satan being manifest in the flesh, folks, that means that the devil is prepared for the coming of the Lord at any moment. I don't think the devil knows when the Lord's coming back. I know some people have tried to speculate, you know, that Napoleon was 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 the Antichrist that Satan had ready. You know, Hitler was the Antichrist that Satan had ready. I don't know if I buy all that. I, like I said, I personally believe that Judas comes back up out of the pit. Uh, he's somehow resurrected or reincarnated or whatever you want to call it. Um, but, but the idea or the concept still stands. The devil has had the Antichrist ready since the days of Paul, ready for the coming of the Lord and for him to try to set up his kingdom, and, and he will set up his kingdom and take over and all that kind of stuff. So what I'm saying is, is this. So that's, that's kind of the meaty doctrinal 
look at it, okay? The, the, the son of perdition, Judas being the Antichrist, and, and, you know, the physical seed of Satan and all that kind of stuff. But here's the practical application. You ready? Here's the devotion from the doctrine. If Satan is ready and prepared for the coming of the Lord, don't you think we should be? If you're not saved, you ought to get saved. If you are saved, if you're not living for the Lord, you better start living for him. If you've got lost loved ones, you better start witnessing to him. If the devil is prepared for the coming of the Lord, me and you ought to be prepared for the coming of the Lord. What a devotional thought, all right? Well, listen, folks, God bless you. Hey, like and share this video, all that kind of stuff. Like and subscribe uh, to the channel here. There's going to be a lot more of this kind of stuff going on, uh, these Bible studies, okay? Listen, Lord bless you is my prayer.